Hi crafters! Today we're going to create a mail card and those are always a little bit harder. We don't want it to be super fluffy and hearts and flowers and all that. So I'm going to use some design paper and one sentiment stamp. We're going to make a very quick, very important card and we're going to make it very masculine. So let's get to it. To start off today, I will use some masculine type colors. I'm using this blue, green, and tan colored 6x6 design paper and a beautiful bold blue that we'll use as a border for that design paper. We'll put this on some craft brown cardstock base. Now let's see if I can jazz it up a little bit as this will be to celebrate our retirement. I'll fold the card base so I can cut it in half with my guillotine paper cutter to get two card bases from this sheet of cardstock. Cutting this in half will give me two A2 card bases. Then I'm going to fuss around a bit to decide what areas of this gorgeous card stock to trim down. I love the blue, but the tan sand color is really nice too. I'll just mark it with a pencil and then cut it with my paper trimmer. I use my paper trimmer when I need to see pencil marks and keep things nice and straight. I use the guillotine cutter when I have thicker paper or when measuring the card stock size. You'll see as I lined this up that I jostled it a bit, so it will cause it to be uneven with this cut. From this vantage point after the fact, I see the issue right away, but it wasn't until I cut it that I saw it at the time. Luckily, we can fix this. Setting it firmly on the raised side of the trimmer allows me to square it back up very nicely, and we're ready to move forward no harm, and only you and I know about this little mess up. Then to find my pencil mark and make the other cut. You can tell I'm a little bit nervous as I measure this twice. Don't want to make the same mistake twice. Now we have the paper cut out and I'm going to want to add a sentiment in the center of the card. So should I use the design paper or more of the bold blue as the backdrop? What would you have done here? Let me know in the comments. Next, I'll emboss the design paper just to give it a little more interest. I love this embossing folder that I'm using. It will coordinate really well with this simple yet masculine card. It's just got some night nice leaves. It feel like a really nice design. Now I'll add a little glue. Well, maybe lots of dots of glue as this embossing folder has a lot of lumps and bumps. I use my Barely Art Precision Glue that you all know that I love. Warning for those of you that haven't used this glue, you can't mess around and reposition it. It dries really fast, so I set it and move on. It's already dry, so we can move to the next step. As I trim the edges of the blue border paper, you'll notice that I don't leave the normal quarter to an eighth of an inch. Because it's such a bold color, I wanted only a tiny bit peeking around the design paper. I'm going to use the same blue paper for the border for the sentiment strip, so I just don't want that blue to overwhelm it in the design. Okay, I like it so far. It feels very casual and beachy. What do you think? Time for some stamping. First for the sentiment, I'll use my We Are Memory Keepers stamp positioner. I have a perfect stamp pad that coordinates well with that bold blue. It's in the color Blueberry Bushel and the stamp pad is from Stampin' Up. I got these stamp pads for Christmas as they're a little pricey, so I struggle to buy them for myself, and I love them. These stamp pads are so juicy, and I always get a great image. I cut a grip map for my stamp positioner as well, so I don't need to use those magnets anymore. I had a love-a-hate relationship with the magnets. I'll use this Happy Retirement stamp. I think it's my only retirement stamp, honestly. I always do a test stamp first. Sometimes if a stamp hasn't been used, it may have higher areas around the stamp that will ruin the image, so I always test stamp first. I usually regret it if I rush and skip the step. I also clean around the stamp if I get messy while inking it up, otherwise it ends up on my hands or something, so better safe than sorry. Okay, the image was fine, so on to the real thing. This stamp positioner is nice because I can see everything. It lines up well with these pegs and I always keep the We Are Memory Keepers logo at the bottom so I don't stamp it upside down or anything like that. I used light steady pressure and it came out perfectly first try. This stamp pad dries really quickly as well so I will pop this onto the border. I use some Tim Holtz long bladed scissors to trim it down and add it to the blue border paper. I decided on the leftover blue from the design paper to use as a strip across the card. I know it's a lot of blue, but the guy that this is for wore a blue button-down shirt almost every day of our time employed together. So I'm guessing that he likes blue. 
Wouldn't you think so? I do think we need to cut up the blue a bit and add a little sparkle. If I can't have flowers, hearts, and sequins, like I like on a lot of my cards, I can at least have a little sparkle. I decided to use this washi tape in deep gold, but I need to cut the strip down a bit more first. You'll notice as I'm cutting this, I like triple check now before I cut since I screwed this up earlier. My husband always says, measure twice, cut once when it comes to carpentry type projects. So I should use the same logic with card crafting, right? Okay, I think that size will work and leave enough space for the washi tape. I'll pop the sentiment up with some foam tape to give it a little dimension. Make sure you're always generous with your foam tape. I decided on the deeper gold color washi. I'll lay the sentiment strip on my cutting mat to make sure the washi tape is even. Washi is not very sticky, so I don't like to pick it up and lay it down multiple times and make it even less sticky. The ruler on this cutting mat helps me get it right the first time. I add glue at the edges to make sure the washi stays put. If I didn't have a sentiment on the front, I would have glued it all the way across. Now I'll remove the backing and add the sentiment to the card strip. Nice and even. Then we'll just glue it all down and that should do it for the front of the card. The next thing we need to focus on is the inside of the card. Not everybody does the inside of the card. Let me know if you're an inside person or if you just only work on the front. I'm adding off-white cardstock to the inside of the card base and I'll need to trim it down just a bit because it's the same size as the card base. Now I almost always do my stamping before I adhere the lighter card stop to the inside of the card, but as you'll see, for some reason, I forgot today until the second I glued it down. Then I get kind of this feeling of dread like, oh no, I just glued it down and I haven't stamped yet. Hopefully I don't mess up the stamping. For me, stamping is always the part of my card making that I do mess up, and it's something that's just harder to fix. When it's already adhered, it could just make the issue worse if your stamping didn't go well. I'll also adhere the card front while I'm gluing. Again, I apply it and there's not much wiggle room here because this glue dries so fast. I'll definitely use my stamp positioner since I already have my card assembled. I tend to do better using the stamp positioner as it's harder to rock the stamp with it. And if you don't ink it enough, you can always stamp it a second time with a stamp positioner, which is awesome. I've been doing card making for a long time and when they didn't have these uh, and you made that error in your stamping, it was not good. Here, I almost stamped it upside down, but I used my handy trick of always having the label at the bottom, so I caught myself. I didn't have a perfect image the first time, so I needed to ink it a little bit more. And that's the beauty of the stamp positioner. Let's do it again. Voila, a better image. Okay, as much as I like it, I think it needs more and I like to tie it in with the card front. So maybe this leftover strip from the design paper or the washi. Let's not over shimmer this card. So we'll trim that strip in half since I only have one left. I think it'll work nicely at the top and bottom of the inside of the card. What do you think? Okay, I'll glue them on and then we'll just cut off the edges. I think this looks really good. I like how the inside now ties nicely with the card front. Now, when you thought we were all done, anyone who know what else I like to add? Yep, let's jazz up the envelope. I pulled out a scrap from the bold blue and the washi, but I can't decide where to put it. The front? No, let's put it on the back flap, inside the flap, so we won't have any issues when we mail it. I'm going to just add a strip of washi and then the strip of the bold blue and glue it all down. Now that'll be a match made in heaven with the envelope coordinating beautifully with the card. I just think it looks so much more put together, so I don't usually skip this part. Are any of you diehard envelope embellishers? I hope I'm not the only one out there. All right, I hope you like it. What else would you have added? Leave me a comment below as I'm always looking for ideas, especially when it comes to masculine cards. And hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining me today on this Gentastic journey. I post content weekly, so please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you're reminded each week when I post. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, happy crafting.